giving our praise to God and all to our pastor, to uh, our ministers, to our brothers and sisters in Christ. I say good morning, and we thank God for yet another opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. But before we get into the Word, I'd like to be able to bow our heads and say a moment of prayer, and then we will go and see what the Lord has given us for today. All right? Bow our heads. The Father in heaven, as we come before that present once again on another Lord's day, yes. we come at the time that, Father, realizing that you've been good, that you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. So as we come before that present, you come before your present with our head bowed and our hearts humble, and we come there, Father, depending on you, and asking that you look beyond our faults and see our very need. Realize that, Father, we have came to a, yet another week, and we've seen things and that has has concerned us and stressed us and maybe even made us angry. But at the same time, you were able to still keep us, hold us, and give us that assurance that everything's going to be all right. all right. So we pray to Father that we come together this morning to study and discuss your word. We ask the Father that you stop by if you don't stay long. Allow your spirit to come in to warm and touch these whole cold hearts of ours mm. and give us that earnest desire to be able to to learn and to accept your word, and not only to learn it and accept it, but to apply it to everyday life. As always, don't forget those that are less fortunate than ourselves. We ask the Father that you continue to look after the sick, look at those that bereave, those behind prison bar, and man and woman, that, and boy and girl that's in the street that don't know you in the part of that sin. And I pray the Father that you look at the world as a whole, because the world really needs your peace, and really needs your, your power and your grace. Yes, Lord. And then pray to also the Father that you never forget our pastor. Continue yes. to be able to yes. lead and guide him in the way in which he must go. And I pray to the Father that you give him power to preach an uncompromising gospel while some lost man, woman, boy, or girl may come with a willing desire to be saved. Never forget your companion walk by side daily. I pray to the Father that you give her the strength and mind to keep on keeping on. I pray to Father that you touch her body and give her that, that uh, confidence and assurance that you are with her yes. and that you are walking by her side every day. We ask a special blessing on Rose Hill also, dear Father, but not only Rose Hill, but all church doors that stand open in your name, preaching an uncompromising gospel. And then the Father, when we know all that, that we can do on this side of life, you say, well done. Mm -hmm. Get a river soul to rest and place somewhere in your kingdom where we can praise your name throughout eternity. He's no blessing we ask in our son named Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And we always say that uh, we have another good lesson. And one thing about the word of God, it is always good. All right. And no matter when you see it, when you read it, or when you hear it, it's still good. Today we are speaking about, this is September 19, and this is lesson number three. Praise by expecting and following. And our theme for the quarter is celebrating God. And the unit theme for this lesson is God's people offer praise. Our lesson aim at participating in this lesson, each learner will be able to describe the life situation of a blind person in the time of Jesus. Explain the biblical connection between the physical blindness and spiritual blindness. And three, acknowledge the danger of spiritual blindness. Now we have two outlines, our first outline, the blind beggar, Mark 10, 46 to 48. A, daily pleading. B, distributing, disturbing the peace. We have footnote, blinded by culture. <clears throat> our second outline, the merciful master, Mark 10, 49 to 52. A, Jesus called. B, Jesus make whole. And a final footnote, faithful in death. And we have conclusion, A, Lord, have mercy, B, prayer, C, thought to remember. Our devotion read is Mark 10, 46 to 52. Background scripture, Mark 10, 46 to 52. Luke 18, 18, chapter 35th to the 43rd verse. And our printed text is Mark 10, 46 to 52, and it reads as follows. 
And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, ride, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rode and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. And Lord, I bless the reading to the hearers and the doers of his word. Now the scripture that was that's prior to our lesson, this is the tenth chapter. Excuse me, tenth chapter Mark, but it starts at the forty-sixth verse. Um, but if, if you would, I would always admonish our, you know, our, our Bible scholars to, when we have a, a printed text in our lesson, look at the scripture prior to that, and also sometimes it's good to read the scripture that follow. And we can get a good context about what we are looking at and how we arrived at this point in our lesson. Now we look, uh, look at the uh, 10th chapter of Mark, starting around about the first verse. Uh, Jesus is in conversation with members of the multitude, and he is uh, laying out directions to his disciples, whereby they can get an understanding of exactly what it is that he's doing. Now he, he, he dealt with the subject of marriage, and he, uh, he gave a good uh, recitation to those that are hearing as to uh, what Moses did and why Moses did it. But at the same time, he reiterated the fact that, that God instituted marriage and that it was something that no man should put asunder. Then he went on to uh, uh, elaborate a little bit further uh, the question was still asked by his disciples, and he, he gave a good uh, uh, description of exactly how they're supposed to view that. And the disciples themselves, it said that they were always amazed when he said something. Now, you, you can ask the question that these gentlemen had been with him for just about three years, and that he was on his way to Jerusalem. And you would ask that question and say, now, you've been with the Lord, all this time, and we watched him heal all manner of sickness and disease, and you've seen him perform uh, all types of miracles. Why at this point are you still being amazed? I can understand that they, they can look at things and say that, you know, you, you surprised me, but who it was that they were dealing with, it, it shouldn't have seemed that they should have been that amazed because they were walking daily with the Lord himself and, and knowing and confessing to themselves that he was uh, the Son of God. It, it, it shouldn't have amazed them, but they, they were. But then again, you know, further on in the scripture, uh, they say there's a young, a young wealthy gentleman came before the Lord and asked him what, 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 what he need to do to inherit eternal life. And he, he enumerated things that he had been doing, how he had been keeping the Ten Commandments since his youth up, and Jesus and everything. So, so that was good. That's good. And, and say Jesus and everything loved him, but he told me he had one thing yet that he could do that would make him perfect. And that was to sell all that he had and give to the poor. Uh, but this grieved the young man because he had very much, and he couldn't part with what he had to do with Jesus, he just had 
recommending that he did do. And he said he went away sorrowful. Then the discussion with his disciples was that it would be difficult for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And that's what I'm doing, I'm leading up to today's lesson, so don't, don't get lost in where I'm at right now, all right? And, and his disciples asked the question, he said, say, man, if we have to do all that, is it any way possible that a man can be saved? And, and Jesus, again, as they said, they were amazed. Let them know and everything that the Father Himself can save and everything. And if they will listen to what He is saying to them and how He is directing them and everything, that shouldn't be an issue. But again, the disciples, at this point in time, they had not received the Holy Ghost. So therefore, their understanding was limited. But the Lord and everything was merciful because He knew eventually what they would become. So I'm going to stop right there. When we, we look at, uh, you know, I met my brother and sister in our congregation, and we, are, we see them as they are now. But, but God, he not only sees you as you are now, but he sees what you will and can become if right. you stay in the Word. Right. All right? Right. Now, our subject says, praise by expecting and following. We know the, the young man right here, or the blind man, uh, was expecting something from Jesus. But what I'm saying right here is that all of us need to expect something from the Lord for our following. And the Lord had laid out very plainly in everything. If we follow him and he follow his word, there are certain blessings in this life that we will receive, not only that, but in the world to come. All right? Now, let us move up to today's lesson. The question, as I always ask, <clears throat> how many of us have looked at and studied our lesson? One hand. <clears throat> One is better than none. Okay. All right. <clears throat> it says that in, in, in the ancient world, and blindness was a very common thing. And that uh, there was issues that uh, people used to give a reason as to why people were blind. Some said it had to do with uh, sins of the Father. Some said it had to, had to do with the sins of the individual themselves. Um, but in many cases, the reason for blindness and everything well, was a, a, a physical condition. And, and that it, it couldn't be necessary, uh, 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 blame shouldn't be necessarily applied to the parents because of the person's condition. And it could not also be assigned to that individual. It could just be a, a health issue. They either were blind from birth or something caused them to be blind in life and they lost their sight. And so there's many reasons, but in the ancient time, uh, sin was always looked at as a reason why this individual, uh, individual that were blind, uh, that was the reason they had the condition. So we, we're going to look at that a little bit further in the lesson. Now, <clears throat> for those that have looked at our lesson, let's, let's somewhat set the... Uh, uh, stage here. Said in our first outline, this book about the blind beggar, and and they say, and then they came to Jericho. Now, during the feast of the Passover, many pilgrims traveled to Jerusalem, and on the road uh, uh, that goes through Jericho, there was always a large procession of people traveling, going, going uh, up the road to Jerusalem. And so therefore, people that were destitute, that was in a position that they, they didn't have much, and you know, this was a good place to hang out, uh, to beg. And I'm going to stop right there. Now most of us, 
in today's time, if you drive down the highway, whether it's on the street corner, whether it's down at the shopping center or wherever, we always can find somebody that's sitting somewhere <clears throat> saying that, uh, that uh, I'm homeless and that uh, I'm broke. Uh, I don't have anything. And that, uh, oh, I'm a veteran. And could you please help? Anything would help. And, uh, <clears throat> and how we view that <clears throat> uh, can be said in many ways. Now, most of us say that uh, I don't fool with those people. You know, I, I, I don't give them nothing. They say, I, because I know all they out there just for a scam. They out there just trying to pretend that they're really sick and down and out, and really they are not. And so therefore, I'm not going to entertain them. I'm not going to give them anything. And I, and I, tell, them, I tell them sometimes, get out of my face. And no, I'm not going to ask the question, are uh, any of us in here guilty of that? Uh, but we know the lay of the land. And we know what we have done. Morning, Rabbit. Morning. I mean, we know that as God sits high and he looks low, uh, he knows, as far as our Christian duty and responsibility goes, he knows what we have and have not done. Now, uh, but we're not going to belabor that point. Now, uh, that is a uh, I think it's in the book of Matthew, and I can't quote the scripture, whereby uh, uh, it was a story whereby Jesus, a lady, was preparing a house to meet the Lord. And that uh, she had fixed up everything in there very beautifully. So she was waiting on the arrival of the Lord. They said, uh, then someone knocked on the door. He said, it, it was a uh, a ragged person, you know, asking for food. And she brought him off. She said, I ain't got time for this. I'm waiting on the Lord. And then there was a number of other people showed up as well. And she turned them away. But when the Lord finally appeared in the manner in which she expected him to appear, uh, he indicated to her uh, that he had been there or four times. And each time she turned him away. And then she couldn't understand how I did that because he indicated or he referenced those individuals that came and everything were me. He said, because I didn't come in the manner that you you look for, those individuals would be discounted. And so if we if we look at our lesson, you know, keep that up in mind. Now, as the beggar was sitting by the side of the road, uh, again, we say it was a lot of traffic going along there. He felt there was a good opportunity to be able to sit and beg and, and get some benefit from the, the pilgrim that he traveled on the way to Jerusalem. Now, but as he sat, uh, well, let me ask this question. Well, I'm Bible scholar. Now, for those of us that are familiar with the lesson, do we believe as he, as he planned to sit by the side of the road, did he do that with the expectation of Jesus passing by? Anyone? Give it a shot. I think that was just his, that was just his custom since Mary Collins. Such a popular city, and there's a lot of traffic on that road. I think that was just a good place for him to get his bag on. Okay. Amen, amen. You know, I'm picturing myself in that position, in that scenario in my mind, and I'm thinking, well, if he's blind, how did he know Jesus was coming down the road? and when to say, call out to him. Uh, maybe there were people celebrating in the crowd, I don't know. But what we have here in the book, that's the question that comes to me is, is 
Now, if he's blind, first of all, how is he going to know Jesus is coming? And uh, uh, second of all, it says up here he was begging there anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of like a a whole the scenario for me uh, situation. For me. So, okay, well, we can get into a little bit further, but he, he, you, we've heard the phrase that being at the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. And we can look at that and in Acts chapter, he was in the right place at the right time mm -hmm. for the blessing that he needed. Mm -hmm. But the scripture doesn't give any indication that uh, 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 he went there primarily knowing that Jesus would pass by mm -hmm. to be able to get this blessing. It doesn't indicate that. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. But let's read a little bit further in the scripture. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway. All right? And when he heard that Jesus, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, now, as the people and the crowd of people yeah. that are yeah, that's right. with Jesus and Jesus' disciples, they say that uh, he heard. Now, one unique thing about the blind man, or the blind beggar, is that uh, he was a man of faith. Now, we know not in this quarter lesson, but in previous quarter, uh, we had a long rendition by faith and how Jesus was continually trying to teach and emphasize to his disciples the power of faith and what faith could do do for you. In many cases, he would always indicate that they had very little faith. All right. Now, and we, and we came out of those quarters with the, with the thought that that if we have the faith that we say we have, that we don't stress, we don't worry, we we don't come all apart when circumstances hit us. Whether it be losing a job, losing a loved one, losing a home, losing a car. We know that the Lord in everything that who is the Lord of our life, He He knows what our situation is. And He has promised us that He will never leave us nor forsake us. Now, if your faith is solid, you know that. So no matter what comes, no matter what goes, that the Lord is in charge and He knows what your situation is and He got your back. Mm -hmm. And when a person moves and operates like that and everything, it is nothing that I worry about because we say ourselves and everything that the Lord can do the impossible. Mm -hmm. Nothing is too big for God. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to say it here inside the sanctuary, but to get out there and live it in a in the real world, that's two different things. Mm -hmm. All right? Talk is cheap. Anybody can talk, but then you got to live it. Now, getting back to uh, the blind man on the side of the road. It's a, he begged, he began to cry and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now, that right there, when he alluded to the fact, the son of David. Now, I don't know whether or not the, the crowd, anybody in the crowd knew who he was referencing, uh, or how he understood this, but he did know this. When you look at him, he was physically blind, but that showed by that statement that he had, I think the um, commentary Put it very well, say, Bartimaeus was physically blind, but spiritually, his vision was 2020. So, so therefore, spiritually, when he heard the name of Jesus, he knew that Jesus had what he needed, and that that was the gift of sight. So, I don't know how many days he, he sat out there on the side of the road, but this time, he wasn't going to let this opportunity get past him. And then he's going he's to call out to Jesus, let it, let it be known that uh, 
hear him. Now, there was, there was some other lesson that we had from, uh, in other commentary whereby uh, uh, there were lepers. And, and, and as Jesus passed by these leper colony, they cried out to him to have mercy on them. And they knew there was another faith lesson. They knew that Jesus had the power to heal them from their sickness of, that they had. All right? And therefore they were blessed. Well, I, um, it was no secret that they knew that the Messiah would come from the lineage of David. There were so many descriptive signs about the Messiah, even to where he would be born at. Um, mm -hmm. So it was it was no mystery amongst Jewish scholars and and, and that that um, that it would be come from the lineage of David. And so when 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 Ron Bartimaeus used that phrase, son of David, he that that is faith. He's he's calling Jesus in so many words the Messiah. You, you're, yeah. you're, you're the Messiah. You're, you're that promised one that we've been waiting on that's coming from the lineage of David. So he did speak in, that was faith in itself. He could have just called him rabbi, you know, but he made a, a, a distinction of son of, of, of David. Mm -hmm. Now that, that title would describe as a Masonic title, all right? And again, Bartimaeus knew in his spiritual mind and heart, he knew when he heard Jesus was coming and that this title and everything represented Jesus. All right? And so therefore, when he cried out, he made sure that he injected that in there to let Jesus know that he, he recognized and understood who he was and what kind of expectation that he could get by calling out in a loud voice. But again, you notice that he, when he said, Jesus, thy son of David, then the next phrase, have mercy on me. Now, if I had asked the question in the world that we live in, out of all the people that, that we see every day, who are the people that we should really look to to be able to have mercy on humanity? Did anyone ask that question? Say it again, say the question one more time. I say, out of all the people in the world and everything, who is it that we can look to to have mercy on humanity? Ourselves. Now, that has to be looked at very carefully. Now we know and we will we'll testify that we have a loving and a merciful God. That he looks beyond our faults and sees our very need, our very need. And that uh, if, 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 if justice would have plumbed the line, all of us would have been gone a long time ago. But it's by, by the, the grace of God, and that there is built and foundational with mercy. And the other word is compassion. And so, so here is a, is a, is a number of things moving here at one time. Number one, that, uh, that this man is asking for mercy. And he knows the man that, that he, he is calling on for mercy can and will grant it. All right? Because he is showing by faith that, that I know who you are and I know you can do this. All right? Now, if we, if we operate on a daily basis, and, and, and no matter what it is that we say we need or what we, we're trying to do or whatever, we got to know that the Lord and everything we hear us and we cry unto him and ask him to have mercy on me, a sinner. And that was, that, that was another story in the Bible about uh, uh, they, uh, 
I think when they went up to pray, like they see a beggar right next to me. And then in pride, you know, he's, he patted himself on the back. But then the, blind, the beggar came up and said, Lord, have, on, have mercy on me, a sinner. Now, when we can look at the fact that we know what we are, and we know the Lord knows what we are, and when we can own up to or confess to that fact, then we clear the way in our hearts and everything for the Lord to be able to bless. And Jesus told the disciple that between the two gentlemen, this was the one that went away blessed. Not the one that got up there with all this here uh, pride and everything. You know, that he will get the reward that he deserved. Now coming back again, so therefore we said a moment ago when he asked the Lord to have mercy on him. Now, before we move to the next scripture, I'd like to indicate this also. Now, we as Christians will be merciful people. We will be compassionate people. All right? And so therefore, that means that we're not looking at our own thing, but we are, we are looking also on the things of others. And so therefore, as we move and operate, uh, our job is to do what the Lord's uh, job was. And that that's a do what we can to help lost humanity. And, and, and it's Jesus' job is, is to teach us to be able to help someone be whole. Amen. And the question I have right now, how, what does it mean to be whole? Lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. Well, that's a good phrase. Anyone else? Be whole down here on earth, or just in general? Oh, yeah. Well, let's look at the word whole and mean in its totality. We are, the, we are the individual in our totality. What does the word whole completely mean? Now, Reverend say, lacking nothing. Yes, that is, lacking nothing. But I'm looking for accepting Christ. True, except in Christ. So let, let me put it in just simpler terms. Is that a, as an individual, we are a two-part uh, being. We are, as Christians, we are a physical being, and we are a spiritual being. And so therefore, as Christ came, did he come to save the physical being? No. no. But why not here on earth? Uh, in our physical attribute, it should be designed to be able to operate in God's stead. The thing that we say that God does for us. He can only do it with the arms, legs, eyes, mouth of us as physical individuals in this physical world. Now on the spiritual side, that's the other side. But we're supposed to operate as much as spiritual being as we do physical being. So when those two are together in their perfect sense, we are whole. Mm -hmm. And so what Jesus is doing right here, he sees Bartimaeus right there here, uh, blindness, coming back to blindness. He had no problem on the spiritual side with his blindness. It's the physical side that he is lacking and he needs help with. And so they say, and many charge him that he should hold his peace, but he cried out the more a great deal, that son of David have mercy on me. Now, we said a moment ago, he decided he, he wasn't going to miss this opportunity that Jesus passed him by. He wasn't going to miss it. So he's going to make sure that Jesus heard him. And it made no difference what the crowd thought, uh, whether he was embarrassing himself or, or whatever. He's going to get Jesus' attention. And, and what happened? Verse 49 said, And Jesus stood still 
and commanded him to be called. And they called him, called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. In other words, that Jesus had heard you, so you can settle down now. But Jesus called him. But had you noticed one thing? That the crowd, they continually tried to chide him, tried to have him to be quiet. But when Jesus spoke, that changed everything. Now, that's a commercial that was on television back here about 20 years ago. And uh, they say, when E. of Hutton speaks, people listen. So, so, so therefore, when Jesus spoke, it got everybody's attention. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus called him, they, the crowd let him know that, that Jesus called him. And say, and he cast away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. All right? Now, what did Jesus do when he came to him? What did Jesus do? Uh, what did Jesus say to, to the, the blind beggar? He, I know he healed his sight. He gave him his sight. Well, you, yeah, we, we know he did that, but what, what did Jesus ask him? He told him to stand up. And, and when it says here, it says uh, he was a comfort, told him to be of good comfort, rise. He told him to stand up. Yes, and then he took up his robe and did as Jesus commanded. Mm -hmm. But what did Jesus ask him? Will thou be made whole? Okay. He said, Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I? should do unto thee. Now, why do we feel that Jesus asked him that question? Because he had already cried out to him, so he, he was wanted something from him. Sometimes sometime we, we use the questions as sort of what we call rhetorical. Now, it wasn't the fact that Jesus didn't know who he was. It wasn't the fact that Jesus didn't know what he was asking. But he still asked the question. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when, we, when we, we come before God, and God never wants us to come and say, well, Lord, you know what I need, so I shouldn't have to ask him. Well, well, yes, the Lord is all-knowing. All right, the eyes in every place beholding the evil whether the good. He knows what we're going to think before we think it. Well, yes, he knows. But, come and say, Jesus' question was intended to prompt Bartimaeus to verbalize his need and his faith. And so it's a phrase that is always, I've heard, that the reason you have not received is because you have not asked. And so it is not good for us you know, to, to make the assumption that, that the Lord is going to do something uh, just because we said this is what we want. But the Lord wants us to ask. He wants us to be asked, fearing not, doubting not. And for us to show the faith that we say we have, that we know He is the source of what we need we make the request that we do. All right? It's a, it's a Bartimaeus like physical sight, but his spiritual eye that saw clearly who Jesus was. Now again, we're looking at the uh, beggars, blind man, and how, how he recognized who and what Jesus is. Now we say today that, that we believe God is good. And all the time, God is good. Now, how is the world going to know, know that? Witness. All right. And 
decide with is what? A changed life. Your actions. Action. Now, if God is good, and all the time God is good, that means that God is a loving God. And the only way the world will know that He's a loving God and that He's good, they got to be able to see it. And as Minister Strauss said, action. His saints got to be able to show the world that He's good. Because the world will not know it unless they see it. And the only way they will see it, they got to be able to see us. Now, as Jesus is performing this miracle here, and that we said that in discussing with his disciples prior to these scriptures right here, and the thing he was saying to them, they were amazed. Now, God don't want us to just be amazed by what the scriptures are saying. Mm -hmm. He wants us to emulate mm. him. Mm. Then we can amaze the world. All right. Now, if, if we are showing no signs, uh, it's no way in the world that the world will know anything about who Jesus is, what he can do. And number one, They'll ask you the question, what, what has he done for you? And then that question will say, how would you respond to that question? What has he healed you from? What kind of blindness did you have that you now can see? And if you are seeing, how are you seeing from a spiritual side? We, we know everybody in here got got our physical eyes. But from a spiritual eye, why, where are we at? How are we seeing? How is our understanding of the scripture? Are we sat satisfied with a little dab or do you? Uh, just here on Sunday morning, Sunday school? Do we meditate on the word? Do we get into the word? Do we study the word? Like, uh, Second Timothy 2.15 tells us to do, whereby our understanding can grow, and the more understanding that we get, the better able we are to do what the Lord say do. Now, if we just satisfy with what we got, and it's a little, we're going to do a little. So the Lord is looking for his saint to help build his kingdom here on earth, and he's looking for us to be as deep into the world as we can get, mm and learn as much as we can for the short period of time that we're down here yeah. mm -hmm. to be able to do a, 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 a better job mm -hmm. and not just our everyday thing. He didn't save us to just say, I got mine, I'm, I'm going home, so anybody else that ain't got the dog, sorry about that. He saved us to save, mm -hmm. all right? And, and just as I try to yield the floor, and someone may have asked the question, how much faith do we do believe that we have? How much compassion or sympathy do we say we have? And how much mercy are we showing a sad and sick world? All right. Because, believe it or not, as far as that mansion that Jesus said he had went away to prepare for us, and everything, what's going to be in that mansion is going to depend on those very topics. Faith, compassion, mercy, and above all, love. And if we ain't setting up no temple before now, uh, we're going to have a very skimpy mansion. All right? Mm -hmm. So we, we, we thank God for this opportunity to be able to share with us today. And we pray that... Uh, Something was said or something read that was able to touch upon our heart. Praise by expecting. When we call on the name of Jesus, we are expecting a response from Him. And therefore, when we have been blessed, we should do our utmost best to follow His lead. Thank you.
Well, so ten of them. 